Hello y'all, this is Kaiser Redux, a mod for Hearts of Iron 4 that is a standalone Kaiser Reich expansion that focuses on fun and interesting scenarios over realism and grounded lore. We're in the country selection screen, let's go with the United States of America. Our starting ruling party ideology is market liberal, but that could change somewhat soon as we have a very important presidential election coming in November 1936. Just because it's such a nice place, let's use our civilian factories to construct even more on the west coast. This event has some background lore like the US avoiding the horrors of the First World War, somewhat controversial presidents in recent memory, and the rise of populism as well as far left and far right alternative political parties. We're going to take our entire army of five divisions and they'll just hang out at the capital of Washington DC. The time to pick a president has arrived. There are six choices and one other special one at the bottom, that being a deadlock, and we will go with that option. With a failure to pick any candidate, there are riots in the street and some are calling for MacArthur to be made chief executive executive so he can act on his promises to end radicalism. Let's have Herbert Hoover back MacArthur. The country is beginning to fragment, one breakaway being the CSA. We could play as them, but let's stand by the Republic for now. In Africa, Marshal Philip Patan holds on to power. Meanwhile, in America, the car has appeared like the choice of plan as the CSA. Let's stand by the Republic. Things are getting progressively worse as far as unity goes because now the American Union state has emerged like before. Let's continue to stand by the Republic. This is what we've been waiting for. The Pacific governors declare emergency. They I really don't like MacArthur because he goes against the democratic process. Let's stand by the Republic again, but this time it will switch us to the Pacific States of America and we'll play as them. The PSA begins led not by one clear leader, but by the Pacific Congress, which has the negative trait provisional Congress, and the starting ruling party ideology is social conservative. We start with 13 divisions, 12 infantry, and one motorized in the army. As for the Navy, it's quite decent, with the USS Langley being the pride of the fleet. And the Air Force, there is eight wings, mostly consistent of fighters, tactical bombers, and close air support. Browsing through the army commanders, there is two field marshals, and if we scroll down, we can see there is lots and lots of generals. As for the commanders of the Navy, we are going to be fine with the amount of admirals we start off with. Going to the focus tree, the critical political focus last bastion of American democracy cannot be started until the 1937 elections have occurred. While we wait for that to happen, we'll do some army focuses like create the Pacific Defense Command, then the WITS mobilization, which centers around the mass assault doctrine. The second American Civil War is upon us. With it taking place, we have access to decisions that allow us to recruit militia in different areas and states we control. We'll use these decisions to build up our army and supplement existing units. We're going to have to deal with socialist militancy and we can reach out to Huey Long, leader of the American Union State, to discuss talks of peace. We'll attempt this, at least. Our offer is sent to Mr. Long in the AUS and in response to the violation of the unspoken contract between the people and their government by Douglas MacArthur, the governors of California, Washington, and Oregon, issue a joint declaration condemning the general and demand a immediate withdrawal from Washington, D.C. The American Union State sends the offer back. They essentially ask for a total endorsement of Huey Long. This wasn't the plan, so we're giving up on the whole offer and ending the process. We'll just have to fight it out. The Western Manifesto of the so-called protector of American values cannot even bother to respect the basic rights outlined in the Constitution. It would be up to the people of the Pacific to defend America's rights. A new election shall be held. Even with limited candidates, they will have more legitimacy than MacArthur, according to the governor of California. A chief of staff must be selected. Let's go with Henry Arnold, the first in the list. He specializes in artillery, be it towed artillery or towed rocket artillery. The baseball season is canceled. Alexander Patch has made the chief of the army. This will improve our division attack. Brazil in the background there had its election, and we deal with widespread rioting by syndicalists all across the West Coast. In Seattle, for example, longshoremen and teamsters broke into the city hall, leading to a standoff. We now have the national National spirits, minor socialist resistance, and organized clan resistance. We can get rid of them through the combat terrorist decisions we have unlocked just for this situation. Violence in San Diego occurs as California National Guard units are deployed to fight against sailors from Naval Base San Diego who are loyal to MacArthur, who are preventing poll workers from setting up. And we gotta pick a chief of the Air Force. Let's go with Howard Hughes, who focuses on close air support aircraft. The chief of the Navy position is open. Let's give it to Chester Nimitz, and the election is formally declared. The Second American Civil War begins. We're fighting the Western Command Center, and then the AUS, the CSA, the CAR, and the USA, who are saving for last. 
Canada moves into New England. They'll get that region of the country. We could fight them for it, but then I'd be crazy and we gotta deal with immediate problems anyway, like the enemy right next to us. The Western Command Center is a occupied puppet of the United States and for all intents and purposes, like it or not, it's going to represent the federal government in this part of the country. We're going to go big with a wide front offensive into enemy territory. While they're dealing with us, they also gotta fight the American Union state in the east. The Empire of Japan wants to send volunteers. I'm not going to turn down free help. And besides that, we're also getting militia troops from the areas we currently control. The Indo-Chinese Revolution is defeated in Southeast Asia. More relevant to our current situation, though, is the presence of many different political parties in the election, ranging from the Democratic Republicans, the Progressive Party, and the Commonwealth Party, on top of the standard Republicans and Democrats. The Democratic Republicans are known as the Liberal Party unofficially, and they promise a number of reforms and seek to ensure the instability that caused the Civil War never happens again. They take flack from both sides of the spectrum who call their reform measures, quote, halfway. I may have sort of accidentally let the United States take San Francisco. It's fine. We'll send some troops back to prevent them from taking any more land. Let's put our Navy to use and have them watch the Pacific Ocean to prevent any more surprise attacks from bodies of water. Just like New England, Canada seized Alaska. We will have to deal with this later. Due to the high stake nature of the elections, it is no surprise celebrities are getting involved. Humphrey Bogart endorses the Progressive Party, Charlie Chaplin, the Commonwealth Party, John Wayne, the Democratic Party, Henry Fonda, the Democratic Republicans, a plethora of stars including Clark Gable endorsed the Republicans, and Hedda Hopper campaigns for the Democratic Party. We got a pick a Democratic nominee for the 1937 election. Three choices, but let's go with the one at the bottom of the list, that being popular businessman and cultural icon, Walt Disney. Disney accepted the offer for him to be drafted as the nominee of the Democratic Party. This event causes a small amount of political power to be lost and the popularity of social conservatism to go up. 1937 Republican Convention. We pick a Republican nominee here. It doesn't really matter who we go with. Joining the political race is William Harst, who wants a ceasefire with General MacArthur and put an end to crime, syndicalism, and unemployment. He represents the National Democratic Party. 1937 Democratic Republican Convention. Let's just pick a random person. I I just want to say the PSA has so many choices on who can be the president and lead the country. Progressive party nomination. It's going to be somebody and as for the war with the Western Command Center, we are doing well and they are being eaten up by the American Union state in the east. Rebels fighting for the Pacific cause sends us some scavenged supplies. We're not going to turn down some free guns. A baseball league, the Pacific Coast League, has become the highest level of play for the sport due to the decimation of East Coast baseball and thanks to our relative stability, talent is flocking to the league such as Joe DiMaggio. By using command power and political power, we can push on the different fronts of the other Civil War factions since they are our most important enemy at the moment. We'll push on the federal front first. William Hearst uses an array of publications to make sure people feel he is the only viable option, despite being notably disliked by the common people on a more personal level. Speaking of Hearst, he is endorsed by a vaguely right-wing entity called the Spiritualist Party, which consists of various fringe organizations merged together. The time for the election is finally here, and we have a approximately six candidates. We won't be choosing any of them to be president because we'll have Henry Arnold intervene and declare martial law. With the election intervention, we temporarily renounce our claims to the rest of America and all fighting with the Western Command Center comes to a stop. Pacific recall election with the nation now being secure and quite a few pro-intervention parties being illegalized. We can go with Disney without any problems. Those loyal to pro-intervention parties aren't happy and they are causing riots. Let's say no to them and proclaim independence for Forever. Walt Disney makes a public address to the people in an attempt to bring back stability and unity, but it does little to calm the tension across the country. The nation is on the brink of collapse. Arnold will do like he did before and intervene once more because he did so well the first time. Thanks to Arnold's intervention against the pro-interventionists, we may soon have a civil war within a civil war. Something crazy has happened. The idea of reviving a monarchy has become popular. Thanks to the instability, this is a revival because it would be based around people related to Joshua Norton a man who claimed to be Emperor of America in the 19th century. Imperialists attempt a coup. Thousands of quote Nortonists demand Arnold step aside. Let's have that happen so the imperialist will take charge. A new government is formed and the ruling party is now named the Norton Restoration Society. The national focus, the Norton Restoration, is bypassed and we unlock another part of the focus tree. In our new focus branch, let's discard republicanism, remove naysayers, and after we're done cleaning the house, we'll crown Norton II, who shall be the emperor of our country. We're dealing with our own civil war, but looking down to Brazil and South America, they're having to handle breakaway states who are challenging the ruling party. The emperor has been crowned. Norton II is the country leader. He has the trait charitable emperor 
and the description tells us he almost seems reluctant to his position. Norton here historically is Charles Norton, a South African magistrate who is related to the eccentric Norton I through his brother Louis Norton, who had a son named John Norton, and he is the father of Charles, making him the great nephew of Emperor Norton. Moving on from the coronation of the emperor, let's honor the first emperor, restructure our government, and after that, hand out the royal titles by selling them to the highest bidder. The next three focuses we do are all for the emperor, create a constitutional monarchy, and protector of Mexico, which gives us a war goal on Mexico, unsurprisingly. Elections for Prime Minister. We got four choices, but let's go with the one that adheres to social conservatism. To build up our army for any future wars, we're making a ton of National Guard divisions. We are going to rejoin the Second American Civil War by completing the Focus Retake America, but first let's do a true empire which will change our country name. With that done, we're now known as the Pacific American Empire and the flag changes. Over in the Eastern United States, it looks like the Constitution Constitutional American Republic is dominating the competition. Retake America is done, we're back in the Civil War, and I assume our biggest challenge on the other side of the country once we get there will be the CAR. We're pushing into the Western Command Center, it shouldn't be too hard to beat them because all their troops are away fighting the Union State. Communalism and the Latter-day Saints Church, the Mormons essentially want to strengthen the ideals of communalism, we have no comment. With the capitulation of the command center, we face the American Union state now, who is already busy fighting on two fronts, so their armies should be stretched thin. The AUS sent back some troops to stop us, but it's fine though, we'll overwhelm them and go forward from there. Cuba making some big moves, they joined the Reichs Pact, and that is the German Empire faction. The combined syndicates of America is sort of making a comeback, and the federal government is struggling to hold on to Washington, D.C. Meanwhile, the constitutional American Republic is expanding. We're going to have to slow down on the advanced because we're running low on manpower, yet Chicago seems so close yet so far. New England rejoins America. We're just given New England. I'm not complaining, but hey, New England. We're going to recruit militia in our gifted territory. They need all the help they can get because I wasn't expecting this, and we don't want the CSA to just grab everything without a fight. We are battling our way to the Syndicates of America capital, and the CAR, while having a big army, has ran out of manpower. That means it is time for us to attack. Over in Europe, the German Empire is gone, and there seems to be a whole lot of other conflicts going on as well. Two down, two to go. It looks like the CSA and the federal government will be the last enemies we need to beat in this civil war. The Syndicates of America collapse, and before we go to DC, we gotta take a short detour to our southern border to stop Mexico, who is trying to invade us. With just the United States of America left standing, we're gonna take the entire military of the Pacific American Empire and drop it on their capital. Soon, the US and Mexico will be united under one emperor. With reunification, our name becomes the Greater Empire of America, and our flag is modified too. We almost have everything back. We just need to reclaim Hawaii and Alaska, which we will try to do with a couple decisions. Hawaii rejoins America, so we'll annex them, and then we have Alaska, who will also rejoin, and this signifies the end of the Second American Civil War. It was once considered an outlandish idea for America to ever have a monarch, but now it is the new normal, having risen from the instability of the PSA to controlling a reunited country free from serious internal strife. The video is going to stop here. If you enjoyed the mod, make sure to check it out in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Have an awesome day. I'll see y'all later. Bye.